So there's been a lot of discussion about the overs test and how it's kind of a worthless test because you can't stretch the IT band or something along those lines. And I don't think that's the right question. It's kind of like if you go to math class and learn social studies, you're going to be disappointed. But I think there are other reasons to do the overs test. We tend to find that it's one of those tests where if you can get people to, to pass it, a lot of other things tend to clean up, like hip and toe rotation, hip extension, and some other things that you might find valuable. Um, and there are different stages of the test that help identify what interventions you might want to utilize. So starting out, you've got the person in this 90-90 position, and initially you're trying to test the pure movement of the femur on the acetabulum. So if you put your hand here and you do the test correctly, you're stabilizing the ilium. And now what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to test basically pure hip extension. So just relax your leg and you're gonna find a lot of people can't even get to parallel. So in this case, uh, this particular individual cannot get to parallel. So that would tell me that adduction, IT band, if you believe in the IT band thing, it's not even an issue because I can't even get the leg all the way back. If you do the test correctly, you're gonna find that a lot of people can't do that. So that, that's, that's suggestive that there's something going along anteriorly or even in the back extensors that's preventing that hip from extending. And we're not obviously not extending beyond neutral, but if you control for the ilium, you can't even get somebody, you know, somebody's femur parallel with the back here. It's something you might want to restore, especially in a running sport athlete or somebody who's to change direction. So that will tell me that this is a person who either needs some kind of intervention um, to kind of, let's say, reduce some tone in the front of the body or the back extensors, and or recruit something in the back to help improve that hip extension. There's a lot of drills on our YouTube channel where we help address those things, but so step one, can the person extend to neutral? If that person can't, then that's gonna drive our interventions into a way that's more biased towards some posterior chain recruitment or some uh, inhibition type techniques in, in the extensor muscles, uh, mainly like the quads, hip flexors, and lower back. So let's assume that this person could extend to the point that we're looking for. So I'm gonna to have to cheat a little bit, but obviously if I didn't stabilize and I let this, let this person extend his lower back, he can fake the extension. But that's not pure femur on acetabular extension. He's cheating with back extension. So again, I'm not doing the test properly right now, but just to show you, this is where I wanna get the femur to extend. Now from here, what you're looking for is can the femur adduct? Now I'm gonna let the acetabulum ride forward a little bit, let the femur ride forward just so I can demonstrate. But so. This is adduction, you want the knee to be able to hit the table. I can't do that with the amount of hip extension that I want, but for the sake of this discussion. Now, if I get to here, assuming this is full hip extension, or enough hip extension to do the test properly, I wanna make sure, I wanna differentiate between end feels. So, if I do this and I find more of a bony or a harder end feel, that might suggest that I wanna do something that's more biased towards um, adductor recruitment, not to get this leg to drop. If it's a softer end feel, and typically you'll feel a restriction kind of in this glute knee, glute bend, posterior hip capsule type area, you might want to do a different type of intervention. So basically, we're starting out, we're saying, can the person extend to parallel? If that person can't, we're going to go more after hamstring recruitment and maybe some kind of inhibition technique to the rectus femoris, psoas, back extensors. Again, we don't really care what the culprit is. There probably isn't one culprit, but we, we want that person to be able to extend it's something we think most people should be able to do, and a lot of times clinical symptoms uh, resolve when people can pass this test. Once we get the extension component down, can the person adduct? If it's a harder end feel, we're going to tend to go after more adductor type recruitment. If it's a softer end feel, we're going to try to do something to inhibit the tone in this area. So it's kind of three different components, three possible interventions. So again, we think this test is very valuable, and it's got nothing to do with the IT band. We don't subscribe to the idea that you can stretch the IT band. It doesn't matter. There's other reasons to do the test, and it's still valuable. IT band has nothing to do with why this test should be utilized.